Okay, um, good morning everyone. Um, I just uh, want to <laughs> I just want to remind you guys uh, that we have a quiz uh, next uh, next class period on Wednesday. Um, that'll be the last quiz. Uh, the final, remember, is the 15th. Um, that's a Wednesday from 1040 to 110. Uh, half of you will be in this room and half of you will be in a room that's um, undetermined as of yet. Um, I will let you know probably via email uh, what room you're to be in. Uh, remember your 4x6 card is due uh, this by this Friday, okay? And remember, yeah, I remember, I remembered, how to spell remember. Um, remember your lab final on Monday, okay? Or if you're with me, if you're with somebody else, then it's not on Monday. Okay. So um, last time uh, we finished up uh, talking about all the hydrocarbons. Remember, alkanes have only sigma bonds, so C's and H's only sigma bonds. Alkenes have a pi bond um, in them, and specifically a double bond. Uh, alkynes have a triple bond, so two pi bonds at least in them. And these aromatics have these alternating single and double bonds, and a lot of time you'll see them as like a six-membered ring with a circle in the middle of it, okay? So alkenes, alkynes, and aromatics, those are all unsaturated hydrocarbons, and alkanes are the only saturated hydrocarbons. So let's move on to alcohols now. So this is the new functionality. Um, <coughs> so the general structure of an alcohol is What's represented here, remember R is just whatever carbon chain, okay? So an alcohol has this OH group attached to some carbon chain. Okay. So that's what it says here. That's in fact the definition of an alcohol, something with a OH group or a hydroxy group, we call that, or a hydroxyl group attached to a carbon. So the hydroxyl group specifically is the functional group that the alcohols contain, okay? So this thing here, OH, when it's attached to a carbon, is called a hydroxyl group. So let's look at some examples of alcohols. So hopefully everybody can see the OH group attached to the carbon chain there. That's an alcohol. That's ethanol. That's the stuff that's in vodka or tequila or whatever you like. Um, menthol. Remember menthol from the lab? Remember we smelled the menthol and uh, we looked at the different isomers of menthol? This is the stuff that you get in like um, Ben Gay and whatnot, right? But uh, you see the OH right there? That designates it as an alcohol. Okay. Cholesterol. This is the um, biomolecule cholesterol. Uh, if you get too much of it, of course, you have a heart attack. Um, notice the alcohol or the hydroxy functionality here. Okay. Notice the names of these molecules too. Ethanol, menthol, cholesterol, right? That all, what do you think that means? Alcohol. Yeah, that's an alcohol, right? Yeah, that's why you call it an alcohol, okay? Notice cholesterol has a different, uh, not only an alcohol, right, but it's also what? Does it have another functional group in there? Anybody see another one? Ester. ester? Who told you about those? It's not an ester. Nobody sees another functional group in that molecule, huh? You see a what? A double bond, right? Nice to see everybody showed up. 
a double bond, right? So if there's a double bond in it, what do we call it also? What's something that has a double bond in it? An alkene, right? So not only is this an alcohol, but it's an alkene. So we call this a multifunctional molecule. Why do you think we call it multifunctional? Because it's got more than one functional group, right? Makes sense. Okay, so you see this thing down here? Got an OH group, so we call it an alcohol, right? Alcohols dissolve into water, like cholesterol. That's why it's able to be dissolved in your blood. Uh, ethanol, that's why you're able to mix drinks with it. Menthol, that's why we're able to dissolve it into medicines, okay? They can all dissolve into water. Why is that? Because the hydroxy group, hydrogen bonds with water. So whenever something hydrogen bonds with water, water is able to dissolve it. So low molecular weight alcohols are highly soluble in water. Larger alcohols are not as soluble because the proportion of the hydroxy group relative to the stuff that's not soluble in water is too small. Okay? So bigger alcohols aren't as soluble in water. And you can see that here. Butanol, of course. How many carbons does butanol have in it? Four, right? Good job for those of you who remembered. If you don't remember, you're going to have a hard time on the... Sounds like a lot of you guys are going to have a hard time on the quiz on Wednesday. Um, remember, you only get to drop one quiz, and a lot of you guys probably already have a quiz that you want to drop. So if you don't know all this stuff, make sure you go and review this stuff before Wednesday. Okay? Uh, pentanol. How many carbons does pentanol have? Five, yeah. So that one's easy, right? Because it's pent. Um, so, and not to mention, you can look at this graph and it tells you. Um, so you can see the more carbons your uh, uh, alcohol has, the less soluble it is in water. That's what this is showing you. Okay. And the other thing is, you can see alcohols with the same number of carbons as alkanes and ethers, for that matter, have a much higher boiling point. Okay? This is due to the fact that they hydrogen bond with each other, so they kind of stick together. Al uh, alkanes and ethers don't do that. Okay? So, um, some important alcohols. Ethanol, of course, um, uh, used as a cleaning solvent for most uh, applications. Anytime you're going to clean a surface or whatever, you're essentially using ethanol. Again, same stuff that's in, used in alcoholic beverages. If you um, look while you're um, filling up your gas tank, you'll notice that most of the gas around contains 10% ethanol, okay? So it's also used as a fuel source, a very important um, alcohol, moderately toxic. Um, for those of you who have ingested too much, you can uh, know this on your own, right? It'll make you puke. Um, 2-propanol, that's another uh, important alcohol. It's also known as isopropyl alcohol. So this is the stuff that if you get a cut, you want to clean it out, you put that on there. Um, and cholesterol, of course, is another important one. Ethylene uh, glycol um, and propylene glycol are these things uh, that are used as antifreezes. Um, they taste very sweet, actually. Um, don't drink them. Uh, okay, you can see a bunch of other alcohols here. Um, 
their uses, and whatnot. Okay, so let's look at a functionality that we could also call an alcohol, but it's a special type of alcohol. They're uh, known as phenols. So specifically, this structure here is phenol. Notice this has two different functionalities in it, this molecule. Can somebody name me one of them? A hydroxyl group or an alcohol. I would take either one of them. What's the other one? The benzene ring or the aromatic ring, right? Okay. So in fact, this thing is composed of just its functional groups. Two functional groups stick together. So it's a hydroxyl group attached to the benzene ring. Notice examples of phenols. Okay. There's phenol itself. Here's a phenol, and here's a phenol. Uh, what's the relation of the hydroxyl group to the bromine in this phenol? Do you guys remember? Yeah, it's para. Okay? So if you don't remember that, go back and look. Remember, there's ortho, meta, and para. Okay? So what about here? What's the relationship between these two groups here? Ortho. Okay, what about these two groups here? Meta. 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 And these two? Para. Okay. So watch out. Um, so here's some phenols that are used as disinfectants. Okay. Notice the phenol functionality. So you've got to have that OH attached to a benzene ring there. Okay. So this portion of it's a phenol, but this portion of it is. The whole thing is a phenol, right? Okay, so some antioxidants that are used in food. So we eat this stuff all the time. We eat BHT all the time. Some good stuff. Uh, this just... Um, doesn't allow oxygen to um, destroy the food as fast, okay? <coughs> so what will happen is uh, the benzene ring, as a matter of fact, will uh, capture the electrons that the oxygen is using to reduce the food. So it slows down the destruction of your food, therefore you can keep it for longer. Okay, so that's that with phenols, alcohols. Okay, let's talk about ethers now. Ethers are very similar to alcohols. Of course, the only difference is, right, that they're not attached to a hydrogen, okay? They're attached to two different carbon chains. So it's got the functional group of an oxygen attached to two carbons, R and R prime here. Okay, so there's some examples of ethers. So do you guys see? You guys see that's an ether, right? What what's over here? Carbon. Carbon with how many hydrogens? Three. What do we call that? A carbon with three hydrogens. What kind of group do we call that? A methyl group. Yeah. So I want you to say there's a methyl group over there. Okay. What about here? Is that a hydrogen there? No. Okay. So we got to make sure that's a carbon, right? It's a methyl group, right? Okay. So notice this is an ether. Why? Because there's a carbon there. There's a carbon there, right? How many hydrogens does that carbon have on it? Zero. Zero, right? Why is that? How do you know? It's already got four bonds, right? It's already got four bonds. Okay. What about that carbon there? Two hydrogens, right? Very good. So this we call a cyclic ether. Why do you think we call it that? Because it's in a ring, right? So anything in a ring we call cyclic. Okay. 
as a matter of fact. Uh, we call things that have atoms that are other than carbon in the ring, we call them heterocyclic uh, molecules. Why do you think we call them heterocyclic? Because they have a what in the ring? Not a double bond. So what is, what is anything other than a carbon or a hydrogen called? What is any atom other than a carbon or hydrogen called? Heteroatom, right? So why do you think we call these heterocyclics? Somebody besides the person who told me that they're called heteroatoms. Tell me. Now they have carbons in their rings. How many carbons does this thing have in its ring? Four, right? And what? One oxygen. Why do we call it a heterocyclic ring? Because it's got an oxygen, or specifically, not just an oxygen, right? What is it? It has a heteroatom, okay? okay? So these molecules, right, shown here, um, what type of molecules are they? If I asked you, what's the functional group in this molecule, you would say what? Or what type of molecules are these? So we're on the, okay, so everyone, right? I expect everybody to be talking back and forth to me, right? Um, we're on the ether section, so it only makes sense that everybody should shout at me that these are called ethers, okay? Um, I hope that people are taking note of the things that I'm saying, okay? Can anybody else tell me another type of functional group that's in one of these molecules? A double bond, yeah, or an alkene, right? So you can say that, either one of those. So hopefully you guys can see that this, these each have two alkenes in them. So not only are they ethers, but they're alkenes, okay? So let's talk about the properties of ethers. Probably, pardon me. Um, whoops. So they're less polar than alcohols. So since they're less polar, that means they dissolve into water less. But they're more, po more polar than alkanes. So they dissolve into water better than alkanes. Um, they have low boiling points and low melting points because they don't hydrogen bond. And they're very flammable. Okay. So let's talk about the carbonyl group. So this group, this C double bond O here, is a common portion of functional groups that are found um, within a variety of molecules, okay? So this portion here is found in a bunch of different functional groups, okay? The, this is the functional group for only one molecule or one type of molecule, a ketone. But if we add stuff to the ends of it, then it becomes the functional group for other types of molecules, okay? And we'll go through it and hopefully by the end of this class period you'll understand. So it says here, a carbonyl group is found in many differing organic compounds. The carbonyl is a component of aldehydes, which is one type of functional group, ketones, which is another type, carboxylic acids, and amides, okay? We're, those are the only ones we're going to learn, although it's a functional group of a lot of other types of, uh, or it's a portion of a lot of types of other functional groups, okay? So Let's look at the first one, the most simplest, or the most simple carbonyl containing compound, type of compound. It's called an aldehyde. Okay. You ever smell almond, almonds? Almonds? 
that smell of almonds is an aldehyde, benzaldehyde for that matter. So you can see, hopefully, we've got that carbonyl group in the middle here, right? One side of the carbonyl is attached to a carbon chain, the other side's attached to a hydrogen. That's an aldehyde. Okay? So let's look at some examples of aldehydes. See? The carbonyl group attached to a carbon and a hydrogen. Right? Carbonyl group attached to a hydrogen and a carbon chain. Carbonyl group attached to a hydrogen and a carbon chain. Notice here, look at this type, this, look at the way they're showing this aldehyde here. Can we write aldehydes like that? Is that alright to write aldehydes like that? Yeah, why is that? Because the hydrogen is implied, right? So if you don't see that hydrogen, it's an aldehyde. Doesn't mean that there's nothing coming off of that carbon. Okay? How do you know there's another bond to that carbon? Makes four bonds, right? Yeah, very good. Look at this over here, how they've drawn the aldehyde here. CHO. Okay? So that's just this portion here. CHO. Okay, so a lot of times you'll see aldehydes written like this. Okay, so if you see the different uh, drawings of these aldehydes, so this is a way to draw it, this is a way, this is a way, and this is a way. Okay, so make sure that you draw, or you're able to uh, notice that it's an aldehyde in all of those different types of structures. Okay, so here are some common aldehydes. Um, probably aren't familiar with any of them. Okay, so let's talk about uh, ketones now. So notice the difference between the ketone and the aldehyde, right? The ketone, instead of having a hydrogen here, has another carbon group. So the ketone has the carbonyl functional group um, attached to two other carbons. Okay, so let's look at some ketones. The simplest ketone right there, that's acetone. Okay, so if you've ever used fingernail polish remover, that's what you're using. This is a ketone. Do you guys see that this is a ketone? You see this is a ketone? Okay. This is a ketone here. This is a cyclic ketone. This is called camphor, if you've ever heard of that molecule. That's what that looks like. And this is a ketone here. Okay, so you can write these in a couple of ways too. Okay, so make sure every time you see one of these functional groups uh, that you know what type of compound it is, okay? So here's some important ketones. In fact, uh, most of our hormones um, are uh, ketones. This, have you ever heard of steroid, right? This stru structure here, these rings, rings, rings connected together, these four rings, that's the steroid structure, okay? In fact, cholesterol and progesterone are called that because they're both steroids, right? Cholesterol, that's where the stare comes from, right? St steroid. So that structure there is the steroid structure. Notice testosterone has three different types of functional groups in it, right? Can somebody name me one of those types of functional groups? An alkene, yeah, I'm going to trip over this, an alcohol, and what? And a ketone, right? Okay. So hopefully you were able to do that. What about progesterone? What types of functional groups does it have? A ketone and what? And an alkene. Does it have anything else? So what's this up here? What's that? What is that? An alkene? You think that's an alkene? 
Who thinks that's an alkene? Say no if you don't think that's an alkene. No. no. Okay, good. What do you think it is? Uh -uh. It's not an aldehyde. Why, why, why is it not an aldehyde? Because it has to attach to a hydrogen. Is it attached to a hydrogen? No. No, it's not an alcohol. It's a ketone, right? Why? It's a carbonyl attached to two carbons there. Is there an alcohol up here on this picture? Somewhere? Where is it? Am I closing in on it? Closing in? Yeah, good job, okay. What about this thing here? What is that called? Alkene. What about this thing here? That's also a ketone, okay? So just because they're drawn differently doesn't mean they're different things, okay? So you've got to be notice how to draw these things and what they're drawn like. Okay, so because of the polarity of the carbonyl group, uh, the groups can interact uh, with, other li or with each other, but the attraction isn't as strong as hydrogen bonding. So the boiling point of al aldehydes and ketones is effectively lower than alcohols, but higher than alkanes. So alkanes have this really low boiling point, aldehydes and ketones are intermediate, and then alcohols are higher. Okay, and here's some uh, comparison of the same length of carbon chain. So each one of these has four, well, no, this one has three, or this one has four and all the rest have three um, carbons. But the molecular weight of these molecules is very similar, and we're comparing their boiling points here. So molecular weight of 58, boiling point of zero. That's an alkane, okay? So alkanes don't interact very well with other alkanes, so their boiling point is very low. Things that interact much better th with each other, um, if they play nicely together, they have higher boiling points, right? So you can see the boiling point increase, increase, increase until we get to the alcohol, which is very high. And again, this is due to this hydrogen bonding effect. Okay, so hydrogen bonding also uh, makes things more soluble. So since you can hydrogen bond, aldehydes and ketones are going to be slightly soluble in water. Okay, let's talk about the next uh, type of uh, carbonyl containing functional group. So notice this molecule here, or this general formula, has the general formula of both the carbonyl group and the hydroxyl group, okay? So it's a combination of the two. Don't be calling something that looks like this an alcohol, okay, or a ketone, okay, because they're not those things. You got to have this whole piece here. The C, double bonded to an O, bonded to an O and an H, okay? So this thing's called a carboxylic acid. So again, it's got the carbonyl functional group, that thing there, bonded to a carbon and a hydroxyl group. Okay. So it's, this is not an alcohol. Okay, it's not an alcohol, I'm serious. Okay, so let's look at a carboxylic acid. So do you see here the carboxylic acid? This is acetic acid, this molecule here. If you've ever had vinegar before or smelled vinegar, that's the molecule you're smelling or tasting. But here's some more uh, carboxylic acid. So you can see it there is the carboxylic acid. You see it there, right? You see it there. Do you see it in this molecule? It's actually right there. Okay, so notice you can also draw it COOH. Okay, this is similar to how they draw the aldehyde CHO. Okay, so 
COOH or CO2H, you'll see a lot of times, that all designates a carboxylic acid. Okay. So, is everybody cool with carboxylic acids? Let's draw a molecule on the board, just for fun. Okay, so can anybody tell me the different functional groups that this molecule has in it? So it's got one, two, three, four, maybe four or five, depending on how you're looking at it. Okay, so let's, let's, let's write them all up here. So one, who wants to give me one? Okay, alkene. Okay, well let's let's point out where the alkene is first. All right, that's the alkene. Carbo carboxylic acid, right? That's here. Okay, do you guys see how I'm drawing circles around the different functional groups? So if I ask you to Point out the functional groups. This is the way I want you to do it. Okay. So, yeah, alcohol. Where is that? This one? Or this one? What about this one? Is that alcohol too? Can anybody give me a different name for this? It's actually this whole thing, right? This is a phenol. Why is that a phenol? Because it's the OH group attached to the benzene ring, okay? And then lastly, okay, so hopefully you guys can do something like this. By Wednesday, uh, if not today, by Wednesday. So let's talk about esters now. Okay, so. Well, we've been waiting for all period to learn about esters, what esters were, right? Okay, so this is ester. Notice ester has a, car a carbonyl group in it, right? So it's got that carbonyl group. And so it looks a lot like a carboxylic acid, right? Except for where there's an H there in a carboxylic acid, we've got another carbon chain. The other thing about carboxylic acids that I didn't mention is that they smell really, really, really bad, okay? Like if you've ever smelled, I don't know, the things that you can think of that smell bad, like <laughs> puke or something like that, puke, right? Or sweat, right? Those are all carboxylic acids. Things that smell really, really, really good are esters, okay, ironically enough. So the, the structure is very, very similar, right? The only difference between an ester and a carboxylic acid is instead of this R group there, there's an H. But carboxylic acids smell like crap, literally, right? And uh, esters smell like good, okay? So here are some esters. Hopefully you guys can see there's an ester there, right? And it's attached to a phenol. You see this phenol? Um, there's an ester there. You see the uh, ketone there, hopefully. 
and the benzene ring there. Okay? So each of these molecules has a variety of functional groups in it, even though they're very small. Okay? Remember, functional groups are anything with multiple bonds or heteroatoms, just like what we said at the very beginning of this lecture, okay, a way long time ago, three days or whatever. Okay. So let's look at some smelly esters. Okay, so methyl salicylate here. See the ester group? Methyl, do you see that methyl? What does that mean? CH3, right? Why do you think it's called methyl salicylate? Well, if we look here, it's got a methyl group attached to that ester. Okay, that's why it's called that, methyl salicylate. This other structure here is known as the salicylate or salicylic acid. You ever heard of salicylic acid? You have? Has anybody else ever heard of it? Never heard of it before? Anybody ever heard of maybe acetyl salicylic acid? No, never. Aspirin, that's aspirin. It's a salicylic acid or acetyl salicylic acid. But anyways, methyl salicylate smells like wintergreen, right? Um, ethyl cinnamate smells like cinnamon, okay? Um, isoamyl acetate isoamyl acetate, that smells like bananas. In fact, uh, if you uh, take, um, here's another one that smells like bananas. Um, this one here, isoamyl butyrate, this smells like pears. Okay, so if you ever smelled a pear, that's, what the, the, that's the molecule in the, sm the pear that's making it smell. Um, if you were to uh, cut that piece off, the butyrate piece, or the amyl piece here, sorry, and make this an acid, so replace this with an H here. That would smell like sweat. So it goes from that pear smell to sweat smell. Now you can do this reaction in the lab and you'll smell, you, your nose will be the detector for this, so you can qualitatively detect whether the reaction is finished or not by, you know, how the reaction smells. It's pretty interesting, I think, at least. All right. So um, you can look at these pineapple, fruity smell, orange-like, whatever. Um, and just for the end, we'll just uh, introduce amines. So I know we haven't talked about any nitrogen-containing functional groups, but um, we're only going to talk about two of them. Amines is one. Um, so an amine has a nitrogen attached to one, two, or three carbon atoms, okay, or carbon chains. So the names of the different amines uh, indicate how many carbon atoms they're attached to. So notice this one is a nitrogen that's attached to only one carbon atom. We call this a primary amine, okay, primary. This one's attached to two carbon atoms. We call that a secondary amine, okay. And then this one, it's attached to three carbon atoms. We call that a tertiary amine, okay. So primary, secondary, and tertiary amines, okay. So with that, we'll... Um, stop the lecture. Um, if you want your test back, uh, wait a second. And even if you don't, wait a second so I can give it back to you. Because <laughs> I don't want them. Okay, any questions before we... Uh, online quiz five will be from Wednesday to Friday. You'll have that much time to do it, okay? Or to start it, right? You only have about half an hour to take it, okay? Any other questions before I turn off the video? Okay, cool.